Yes. That's great. Thank you, Suraj. Thank you, Sean. So hopefully they will start coming in another uh, maybe a few seconds. Yes, sure. Yeah, and Professor Sean, you'll be starting the uh, uh, orientation, right? Yes, I okay. will. Yeah. Okay, uh, I will be having my camera and mic turned off, but I'm just trying to figure out the videos uh, to be played on time. But otherwise, the other video is already in my laptop and can be played on time. You just have to call the speaker. So I'll just try figuring out the other video along. All right. Thank you, uh, Professor Sean. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, everybody. So this is a session uh, to be electrochemical systems. So we are happy to have uh, electrochemical desalination. So we have uh, five speaker today. And then my name is uh, Ho Kyung Shun from University of Technology Sydney. Happy to chair this session. And I have co-chair, Professor Dai Wei Liang. Please, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you, uh, chair. Uh, Professor Hokkyo Shon. I'm Dawei Liang uh, from Beihang University in Beijing, China. And uh, I'll be uh, the co chair for this uh, session to be. Okay. Yeah. So, first, uh, we have uh, three first speakers. They will have uh, live uh, presentations. And then, last two speakers. Uh, they recorded uh, their video. So we will just show video and then have a Q&A session. So please, uh, Dai Wei Liang, so can you please introduce the first speakers? Okay, uh, the first speaker will be uh, Hao Jiang. Uh, I don't know how to uh, a, call you, is this a doctor or <laughs> professor? I don't know, anyway. Uh, Ms. Zhang will give us a um, presentation on the topic of uh, development of novel composite electrodes to selectively remove phosphate from for uh, capacitive deionization. Uh, Zhang is from Hongji University. Okay, now the time is yours. Okay, thank you. Hello, professors. I'm a PhD candidate from Tongji University. My name is Hao Zhang. It's my honor to be with you to communicate academic ideas. Today, I would like to share some of my research progresses on development of novel composite electrodes to selectively remove phosphate for capacitive desalination. My presentation is structured in the following way. The biogeochemical cycle of phosphorus lacks a gaseous atmospheric component to assist with cyclic replenishment of soils. Phosphorus flows now last in uh, the anthropogenic cycle. And this will involve new technologies targeting liquids and solids, uh, including erosion and drainage, animal waste, municipal waste, and industrial waste. Among them, with the rapid development of population and social economy, wastewater from human activities is one environmental problem of all, all over the world. Phosphorus enrichment in wastewater discharge lead to the deterioration of aquatic ecosystem and the loss of water supply resources utilization. Therefore, the phosphate emission standard has become more and more strict. And the primary standard, 0.5 milligram per liter, and secondary standard, 
one milligram per liter have been formulated. At present, when phosphorus removal and recovery technologies are mainly divided into physical, chemical, and biological methods. Traditionally, bio, uh, biological phosphorus removal had been widely used in wastewater treatment. Enhanced biological phosphorus removal has a high efficiency. However, its stability is poor. And the uh, removal of phosphorus by salt pyrolysis brings new problems. Uh, so a large number of new technologies have emerged, such as uh, electrochemistry, adsorption, and membrane separation, which can absorb phosphates quickly and efficiently. However, these processes gradually have some problems, such as complex operation, uh, high energy consumption, and high cost, and so on. In recent years, Cooperative deionization, a new desalination technology, had been applied to sewage treatment. It's considered to be an ideal process for simultaneous removal of salt and nutrients. It uses the conductivity and absorption of carbon electrodes to make the positive and negative ions in the solution move to the electrodes at both ends. And then they are stored in the electric double layer to form an intermediate uh, deionization area. Uh, in this study, an organic inorganic composite material was successfully synthesized by terephthalic acid into zinc zirconium layer double hydroxide to maintain the traditional properties of first electron material. We designed the and prepared carbon nanotube composite LDH electrode. Here you can see the two figures which show you the competitive deionization device and the process of material uh, preparation. Uh, first, the materials are, uh, were an analyzed by SEM, SRD, and BET. In these figures, we can see that zinc the code name LDH small particles uh, shoves through the network pores and surface of CNT to form a huge honeycomb. And EDS bedroom also show the high dispersion of zinc and the code elements. BET analysis stated clearly that zinc the code LDH to CNT had a large number of micropores and macropores and a specific surface area was 294.2 square meters per gram, uh, which was higher than that of CNT and zinc the conium LDH. Uh, then using the electrochemical workstation, we attain the CV curve and Nyquist impedance spectrum. The key test results are listed in this table. The competence of zinc the conium uh, LDH to CNT electrode was between CNT and zinc the conium LDH electrode. And although the charge transfer resistance of a uh, composite electrode was larger than that of CNT, it gave a lower solution resistance so that the electrode maintained a lower total impedance. The following is the impact test of CDI operating conditions. We studied the effects of initial uh, phosphate concentration, pH, and voltage. For composite electrodes, the picture show you when the concentration was less than 10 mg per liter, the final concentration was less than 0 0.5 mg per liter within five hours in a wide range of pH. Uh, 3 to 10. This is because zinc and the conium can be combined with phosphate through the in ligand exchange. And uh, the existence of carbon cell group increase the absorption site of phosphate. Besides, when the pH was in the range of 3 to 8, pH less than zero isoelectric point. 
um, the electric surface still had more party uh, charges. So the fast fit remove efficiency was high. And uh, when the pH was in the range of eight to 10, the carbon cell group was completely deprenated, uh, uh, which can be used as a, a hydrogen bond receptor and can only absorb phosphate. In figure E and F, we can see that the higher the voltage, the higher the phosphate removal efficiency. And uh, with the increase of voltage, the firm uh, uh, electric double layer uh, gradually thickened. Uh, by calculating and fitting the above mirror data, we obtain the adsorption kinetic curve under different initial concentrations and voltage. The results show that the adsorption of phosphate on the three electrodes followed the pseudo second order kinetic model. It indicated that with the increase of initial concentration, the adsorption capacity. Uh, accumulated more and more. In these figures, it was observed that the higher the voltage, the faster the adsorption rate, and the faster the adsorption equilibrium was reached. Higher voltage provides stronger driving force for ions, and uh, a thicker electric double layer was formed on the electrical surface to accommodate more phosphate ions. Next, we further study the adsorption process of the electrode and propose a possible adsorption mechanism. In the left figure, the uh, presence of distinguished sharp uh, peaks, peaks of the chromium 3D, zinc 2P, and oxygen 1S in the SPS first gas spectrum. And in the right figure, a new peak of phosphorus 2P was observed on the adsorbent electrodes. Besides, after phosphate adsorption, the binding energies of the conium, zinc, and uh, carbon decrease and increase to a certain extent. This is because of the inner sphere complexation and coordination exchange, which change the density of electron clouds around atoms, resulting in the increase or decrease of binding energy. This mechanism mainly included uh, phosphate was absorbed to the electrode by electrostatic attraction. The hydrogen phosphate ion and hydrogen phosphate ion on the conia where the ligand change and the inner sphere complexing mechanism forming the conium oxygen phosphorus inner sphere complexes. The phosphate ions can exchange with these OH groups and complexing with zinc on the surface. The depronated carbon cell group of formed hydrogen bonds with phosphorus oxygen double bond and phosphorus oxygen single bond. Finally, the selectivity and economy of the <coughs> electrodes are discussed. <coughs> There are many types of ionized in real sewage. These pictures show the effects of different uh, coexisting ion, ions on phosphate adsorption. And we can see chloride ion, nitrate ion, and sulfate ion had a slight impact on phosphate adsorption. And the final uh, concentration was less than 0 0.5 milligram liter. But the existence of by carbonate ion inhibited the adsorption of phosphate to a certain extent. Uh, in order to evaluate the stability of a composite electrode, we carry out a chain adsorption release experiments. The results show that in the first four cycles, the phosphate concentration was lower than 0 0.5 milligram liter. And in the 10th cycle, it was less than one milligram liter. Moreover, in low concentration phosphate uh, treatment, the operating cost of this study was only one sixteenth of that of 
chemical phosphate removal. In short, a novel electrode, zinc zirconium MDH2 CNT electrode with high selective uh, for phosphate absorption was successfully prepared. It showed greater absorption capacity for low concentration phosphate in a wide range of pH with a final concentration as low as 0 0.5 mg per liter. This study reports the potential of the electrode in the practical application of removing phosphate, and further efforts should be made to maximize the advantages of this work. Finally, I'd like to make some acknowledgments. First, I would also uh, I would like to thank Professor Zhao Wu, Zhi Wei Wang, and Chao Ying Wang for their guidance. Finally, I would also like to thank the National Key Research and Development Program China, National Natural Science Foundation of China, and the Shanghai Rising Star Program for the financial support of this study. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Hao Jiang. Uh, yeah, thank and, you. Uh, the time is good, so we have five minutes for the questions. Any questions? Okay, I have some. All right. So uh, this uh, composite uh, electrode is uh, specific for phosphorus, phosphate removal. So the zinc, the conium, and uh, it's a carboxic, uh, carboxylated uh, group on the electrode. But what is the electrode for cathode? That means the other side of the electrode. What is the material? Uh, in this study, uh, we use the uh, uh, carbon nano tube and uh, think the conium LDH electrode as uh, as a uh, uh, comparison. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we study. Uh, we study the. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, phosphate concentration and P pH and uh, 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 and the coenzyme ions. Uh, for the uh, selectivity uh, phosphate removal uh, efficiency. Yes, I understand. But uh, the, the electrode it's, you prepared is specific for phosphate. I mean, what the other side, the electrode, the cathode part, Uh, it's uh, uh, is it, is it carbon, 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 uh, electrode. Carbon uh, electrode. You use carbon oh. electrode. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you use a hybrid system. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. the the well, uh, 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 and cathode uh, are the same, uh, right? What about the long term yeah, stability? Yeah long-term stability of this CPI. Is it still good uh, after several cycles or tens of cycles? Uh, uh, is, you know my question? Turn, uh, uh, Ten cycles. Uh, ten cycle. The the final concentration. The final concentration. Uh, 
in this picture, the final concentration led uh, one minute, uh, one minute grip later. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. To, uh, in, in, so in, in, in 10 in cycles, the, it's still stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the stability after 10 cycles? <laughs> Have uh, you the, investigated? Uh, in, uh, in the next study, we can, uh, uh, we, uh, we can <laughs> change the, the, this, uh, this work. Okay, okay. I see. Uh, th thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions? I think the audience could also answer questions as well. Uh -huh. Here it comes. Uh, one question from our audience uh, asked, are the cathode and the anode the same? I think uh, um, how Jiang has already answered the question uh, just now. The cathode is just simple carbon, right? Activity carbon. Uh, it is carbon electrodes. Uh, um, we uh, combine uh, the carbon electrode and uh, uh, and uh, think the conium of these two CNT electrodes uh, to uh, 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 communicate. Uh, uh, combine the uh, uh, com uh, capacity deionization device. Uh, well, anyways, the, uh, I think uh, 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 you could also answer the question after the uh, talk uh, in the chat group. Uh, okay, let's uh, go to the next uh, speaker. Uh, all right. Okay, the next speaker is the uh, Jin Hong Lim from Korea University. Uh, his topic uh, is about novel high performance titanium oxide nanotube array and the flow electro capacitor of deionization, a hybrid system for low energy deportation of trace organic pollutants and the desalination of brackish water. Okay. Uh, Jin Hong, uh, the time is yours. Thank you, sir. So hello, everyone. Uh, as kindly introduced by Professor Liang, the pr presentation I'll be giving today is on the hybrid PC and FCDI process. Now, uh, I'll briefly start with the introductions of my uh, research. All right. So, as we all know, the, uh, with the increasing population, the demand for seawater or fresh water has been continuously rising as always. Now, of the multiple water bodies on Earth, only 5 to 6% are directly used for fresh water, with the rest being mostly seawater. Now, so as we are all are aware, the market for seawater desalination has been escalating worldwide. However, the problem with seawater desalination is that it's quite energy intensive. And also regions with no access to the sea require alternate sources of water supply. So brackish water has been rising as one such source. Now conventionally, the NF process or the nanofiltration process was widely introduced in regions relying on brackish water to supplement its fresh water supply. Now, however, the NF is also known for its inadequate rejection of monovalent ions. Also, recent studies have revealed that the process shows extremely low rejection for an extensive number of organic contaminants. For example, uh, phenol or nitrobenzene that's commonly found in brackish water. Now also the NF is a pressure driven process. So the NF also consumes high amounts of energy depending on the concentration of the feed water. And it's also prone to membrane filing or the scaling phenomena. Now, meanwhile, with the worldwide movement for a carbon neutral society, a paradigm shift in the field of water treatment is also occurring with electrical chemical based water treatment systems receiving increasing attention. Now, of one such process is the capacitive deionization and its hybrid form of flow electrode capacitive deionization, which I'll be presenting on today, with advantages that can compete against conventional systems. 
Now this system is low energy. It's also low carbon or carbon neutral. It has a very high recovery. Now, and also a study in 2013 revealed that the FCDS system or the MCDI system has lower energy consumption compared to the RO. And also it has a very high sustainable operation. Now, however, uh, as implied by the name of the process, capacitive deionization is a process that targets ionic species. And uh, we cannot use this process to remove organics. So thus, an additional unit is required to remove the organic content of the target water. Now, especially brackish water is known to contain a broad range of organic pollutants originating from waste sources such as industrial, medical, and aquaculture farms. Now, so in our study, we have introduced the photoelectrical catalysis uh, to be called PEC from now, with noble fabricated electrodes for such application. Now, ultimately, the purpose of the work was to investigate the feasibility of the hybrid PEC FCDI system. Uh, I'll briefly explain on the configuration of the PEC and the FCDI systems. Now, for the PEC, the anode we used was a TI mesh and a TI plate, and for the cathode was a PT foil. The surface area of the electrodes were 9.5 centimeters squared. And for the light sources, we used uh, three different types. It's a four watt UVA, UVB, and a UVC. Now for the electrodes used in the PEC system, they were fabricated and uh, they were fabricated on the PI mesh and TI plate on the uh, 600 degrees Celsius under cathodic polarization. Now on the FCDI side, as you can see, the ion exchange membranes that were used were 43 centimeters squared, and the applied voltage was between 0 0.5 to 1.5 volts. Now for the flow electrode, we used the activated carbon with a BET of uh, 2000 approximately, and the mass loading of the activated carbon was between five to 15 weight percent. Now, if we increase the mass loading of the activated carbon within the FCDI system, uh, the overall performance of the process would obviously increase. However, studies in the past have shown that if we increase the mass loading above 20%, uh, the solution leads to clogging of the system because the viscosity becomes much too high. So in our work, we limited the mass loading to 15%. Now I'll briefly go over the results and discussion part of our research. Now, after the fabrica fabrication of our novel BM and BPTNA electrodes, uh, we analyzed the electrodes through uh, SEM, XPS, and XRD analysis. Now, the SEM imagery shown on the uh, left side shows that the successful fabrication of the nanotube arrays was fabricated on the TI mesh and TI plate electrodes. Uh, through the XPS analysis, we can uh, we identified the TI2P and O1S peaks with high binding energy from the annealing. Also, the XRT intensities also show that anatase and rutile crystalline structure was confirmed on the uh, TNA electrodes. Now, uh, to confirm the electrochemical properties of the two BP and BM TNA electrodes, we uh, conducted the analysis through EIS analysis. Now the analysis confirmed reduction in the charge transfer resistance for the BM TNA electrode, which naturally led to improved charge efficiency. Now subsequently, uh, organic degradation potential of the two electrodes were evaluated using benzoic acid as a model substrate under three different light sources as previously introduced. Uh, as you can see from the results, uh, the operation of the PC system showed a far superior performance for the BM TNA electrode under all light sources. So taking a look at the figure on the left, we can see that using the BMTNA electrode, benzoic acid was uh, nearly completely decomposed with even the minimum rejection or decompose rate being 80%. But on the right side, we can see that using the BPTNA electrode, the degradation performance was quite low. And even the highest was only up to 80% with the lowest being around 40%. So we confirmed that the BMTNA electrode showed a much higher photoelectro degradation performance compared to the BPTNA electrode. Now, to further confirm the, uh, the feasibility and the performance of the novel fabricated BMTNA electrode, uh, we applied the system using eight different organic pollutants commonly found in brackish water sources. 
Uh, many of them include 4CP, BPA, phenol, or the common chemicals that are commonly found in the brackish water. Now, uh, through the analysis, we found that different substrate species, for example, the electron donating group or the electron withdrawing group, exhibited varying reaction rates. The phenolic compounds of the electron donating group more easily release protons into the solution under OH radical induced oxidation, and when thus more susceptible to the photoelectrochemical analyzation. Now, in contrast, the benzene ring substitution of the electron withdrawing group hinders substrate degradation. However, a long-term operation of the PC system confirmed that all eight organic pollutants were successfully degraded using the system. Now, moving on, we evaluated the long-term uh, durability of the electrodes through a long-term operation. Now, the evaluation was conducted for approximately 20 hours. And as you can see from the figure presented on the right, uh, stable performance was confirmed all throughout the 20-hour performance analysis. Now, moving on to the subsequent FCDI part. Uh, subsequently, the FCDI process was initially investigated for the optimal operational conditions. Now, the operation optimization was based on applied voltage and electrode mass loading. And evaluation of the optimization parameters was on iron removal efficiency and specific energy consumption. Now, uh, as we all know, higher applied voltage allows stronger attraction of the target ions, leading to increased removal. Also, higher mass loading also leads to increased removal in that the electrode particles act as a bridge for charge transportation. Now, thus, higher electrode mass loading also allows the formation of strongly defined charge percolation pathways, thereby improving the overall charge efficiency of the system. Uh, so as we can see from the figure on the left that shows the iron removal efficiency rate according to applied voltage and electrode mass loading, uh, we can see that the rejection, the removal rate continuously increase it with increased applied voltage and electrode mass loading. However, as I previously explained, uh, having a higher electrode mass loading also increased the electrical current of the system, which also leads to the increase in the specific energy. So that's why taking a look on the right figure that shows the specific energy consumption, uh, we can see that increasing the mass loading and also increasing the applied voltage increased the energy. So comparing these, two uh, values, we found that the optimal condition was the applied voltage of 0.8 volts and a mass loading of 10 weight percentage. Now, applying the optimal condition previously found, uh, we ran the operation of the FCDI again uh, through a feed concentration of around 5,000 brackish water concentration. Uh, as predicted, increase in the applied voltage and mass loading led to the continuous reduction in permeate conductivity, as can be seen. Uh, however, with nominal changes between the 10 and 15%, the optimal condition was confirmed. Now, as you can see from the left-hand figure, that is the increase in the voltage under a five weight percentage condition. And the middle figure is the increase in the voltage under 10 weight percentage figure. Now, the increase in the conductivity performance sharply increased from weight by weight percentage to 10 weight, weight percentage. However, increasing the mass loading from 10 weight percentage to the 15 weight percentage showed a nominal change. And since a 15 weight percentage would only lead to the increase in the energy consumption of the system, we thereby confirmed that the 10 weight percentage is the optimal concentration for the flow electrode parameter. Now, lastly, uh, we operated the PAC FCDI hybrid process uh, by treating a real brackish water solution to produce organic free permeate that satisfies the freshwater TDS standards. Now, the solution was prepared as a complex solution to more accurately reflect the composition of brackish water. As you can see, organic mineralization by the generation of reactive oxygen species within the PAC stage was observed. Uh, as you can see from the figure on the middle, the PAC system shows the uh, complete mineralization of an organic pollutant measured through a TOC level concentration. And TOC levels reached near zero after 40 minutes of operation. Also, no further oxidation byproducts was detected afterwards. Now, subsequently, the permeate of the PEC system was applied as the feed water for the FCDI system. Now, the subsequent FCDI process led to the rapid decrease in the target ionic concentration 
with removal efficiency reaching averaging of 80% in the first absorption process. Now, after a desorption process to regenerate saturated active carbon electrodes, operation of the second pass FCDI system obtained complete deionization of the permeacy stream. And through this analysis, we confirmed the feasibility of the CFCDI hybrid process uh, for producing an organic free permeate that satisfies freshwater TGS concentration. Also, the operation was also conducted in long term, and we found that the stability of both the PEC system and the FCI system was maintained almost even throughout a 24 hour period. Uh, now, conclusively, oh, I'm sorry, now, conclusively, uh, in this study, evaluation of the PEC FCDI hybrid process was conducted, and a stable fabrication of the superior BMTNA electrode was confirmed. And also during the PEC system, generation of reactive oxygen species was confirmed, which led to the organic degradation of the model organic pollutants. Also in the FCDI system, low energy, high performance operation was analyzed via the optimization of the two key operational parameters. And through using this hybrid process, uh, we generated the organic free freshwater that met these freshwater stand TDS standards and we confirmed the P feasibility of this PEC FCDI hybrid process. Oh, thank you for listening to my presentation and I would like to thank the National Research Foundation of Korea for granting the funds required for this research. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ji Hong. Mm -hmm. On to question. So yeah, I have a one question, Ji Hong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a very interesting a hybrid system, mm -hmm. PC you, and followed by FCDI. So just wondering the, it looks like a um, very challenging yeah, process yes, compared yes. to like uh, you have ozonation or AOP, just right. chemical process. Right Now you want to use PC followed by FCDI. So what's the cost to benefit of this technology and then yeah, it looks like uh, you are saying that the uh, British water is uh, uh, wastewater reuse. You try to remove a lot of micropollutant, right? Yes, sir. So That's right. Have you ever considered like a uh, cost impact compared to AOP chemical oxidation process? What's the benefit of uh, this uh, PC followed by FCDI? Uh, yes, sir. As you can see, uh, the aim of our research was to remove both the organic and the ions to yeah. Uh, basically generate a permeous freshwater standard solution. So that's why using just a oxidation process, uh, we would be able to remove the organics, but then we would need a subsequent process to remove the ions. So that's why in the beginning of my introduction, a uh, beginning of the presentation, I said that the, the cyber process was compared, compared to nanofiltration. Now, uh, I don't have the exact values prepared today, but for the PC system, we found that the energy consumption was very low. It was around uh, 0 0.02 kilowatt hour. So it was very low compared to the conventional membrane systems. Also for the FCDI system, it was uh, also very low. As I said in the beginning, under a 4,000 uh, PPM freshwater concentration standards, the FCDI shows even lower energy consumption compared to RO. So if we compare it to the NF system, it, it will also be very low. So that's why in terms of the energy consumption, we also found that this hybrid process has its uh, strength and it's feasible for operation. All right, thank you. Okay, next question is from Nepalia. Yes, sir. Uh, so the question yes. was... Oh. The life source, could you see it? Life, is, life, life source of a PC can be developed for solar energy. If uh, that means uh, the energy mm -hmm. input is unstable and audit and not use the UV light. Mm -hmm. and could you please introduce the collective of the output product? I okay. think uh, uh, that means if you use if the change the UV into solar uh, mm -hmm. sunlight. Yes, sir. Will it be perfect for uh, the, the, B, the BPA removal? Uh, 
Well, for the solar energy, actually, this is uh, our future research that we're trying to do. But um, so if we look at the slides that I'm showing right now, uh, just yep. using the UVA, UVB, and UVC systems, uh, as you can see, if you use a UVC system, the degradation rate reaches almost 40%. So just having the, a light source ABC. is very... Excuse me, sir? Uh, what does it mean, ABC? Oh, uh, UV, UVA, UVB, and UVC sources. So yep. those are the three light sources that are used in this research. Now, just having the light sources only shows a very low rejection or the degradation of the organics. So I think for the solar energy too, uh, especially because it's very unstable and it's periodic. So I think it'll show even lower uh, degradation rates. So I'm not quite sure if solar energy will be quite as feasible. And also for the uh, quality of the output water products from the final presentation slide, as you can see, uh, the organic is completely zero, and that's TOC standards, not the exact concentration of the material itself. And on the ionic part, we can see just running the first pass of the FCDS system removed almost 80% of the entire ion, and having the second pass removed 100%. So if we operate the second absorption phase, uh, actually the concentration of the ion is zero. Oh, uh, one more question. Uh, yes, is the, the BPA fully degraded or just the uh, from some of the byproduct uh, intermediate? What about oh. the DOC removal? <laughs> oh, sorry, sir, you're, you, you are breaking in your question. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the BPA is fully degraded. Yes, sir. Uh, but what about the TOC? Uh, this is fully mineralized. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, the, on the figure, I wrote BPA concentration, but it was actually measured through TOC levels. Oh, okay. I yes, so TOC was completely removed. All right. Thank you, I'll, give, I'll give the chair to Mr. Hong Kyung. Yep. So we have a uh, third speaker, Professor Tai Wei Liang. So my co chair will present about inorganic ion exchange materials, fabricated novel integrated membrane electrodes for MCDI. So please, uh, if you are ready, share the uh, presentation. Sure. And you can start. Okay. Uh, could you see my screen? Yeah, everything okay. All right. Okay. Today I would like to talk about the integrated membrane electrode fabricated with inorganic ion exchange materials or CDI. I'm Dao Yi Liang from Beijing, uh, Beihang University, Beijing, China. Well, uh, fresh water on Earth uh, only accounts for 3% of uh, all waters. And uh, in many places in the world, and the water resources are extremely scarce, especially in the Middle East, uh, North Africa, and most part of uh, Asia, and um, some other countries as well. So therefore, the development of saline water desalination technology is uh, particularly important uh, so far. And among all the desalination processes, CDI has the merits of a no secondary pollution, low cost and energy efficient. Well, okay. Uh, I don't really want to waste time to talk about the working principle about the CDI. I think most of you have already know that the, the carbon electrode could absorb and desorb the ions during charging and discharging and to, to form a desalination and brine uh, priori periodically uh, based on the principle of uh, uh, double layer um, mechanism. But it could be operated in single pass or in batch mode in, and also in different regime based on different configurations could be 
uh, divide it into a uh, flow guide, flow through, or flow electrode CDI, or hybrid CDI, and even not rely on the carbon material that based on the desalination battery from uh, erotic uh, materials as well. Well, anyway, the carbon materials are still the best uh, materials uh, available at present. But so far, there are some problems uh, for the traditional CDI. One is the co-ion effect. When you, discharge, uh, when you charge the electron into the electrode, um, the ideal uh, uh, condition is that the, you, the, the, ele the electrode absorb the counter ions, uh, like the, this part. But in fact, some, in some occasion, it could re repel the co-ion into the water as well. So, and um, even in some cases, the ion swapping uh, occur. So uh, let's come to the, the mechanism for co effect. Uh, actually, it's based on the, the, uh, the, 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 depends on the potential of zero charge value of the electrode. For example, the, the, if the EPZC of, a, of anode is the higher than the discharge um, potential, normally at zero volt, it will, uh, during the charging uh, period of time, it will uh, not only absorb anion, but also desorb uh, the cation into the water. And the same, if on cathode part, if the EP, EPCC of cathode is lower than the discharging uh, potential, so during the charging process, it will, absorb cation at, at the same time discharge the anion into the water as well. Except for cation effect, uh, there are some ferrotic reactions occur at the same time. Um, on the cathode part, uh, it will occur some of the uh, uh, reactions like uh, oxygen reduction or even the, the hydrogen evolution. And on anode part, the um, they will produce oxygen or even the carbon corrosion. Uh, so the far, uh, the ferrotic reactions and the co coin effect will lower the uh, uh, charge efficiency and decrease the, the specific absorption capacity and adding additional energy consumption and made the pH fluctuation uh, in, in the system. So how to solve this problem? Uh, I think uh, researcher has to find some way to solve it. The first is a surface modification of, of, of a carbon materials. And just now I have to show you the mechanism of the coin effect, but um, you could also um, use the surface modification and change the EPVC. For example, you make the EPVC, EPVC of anode negatively shift to uh, lower than the discharge potential um, and also make the cathode, the EPCC of the cathode move positively larger than the discharge um, potential. So it could, could only uh, absorb the counter ion and desorb uh, during the dis discharging. But the disadvantage is that it will reduce the surface area and change the pore structure of the carbon material. The, the next uh, um, approach is to add an ion exchange membrane. Um, it will have some advantages. First is to block the co-ion completely and also inhibit the ferritic reaction as you could see the uh, DO, con DO concentration in the solution it does not change seriously when there is the membrane involved. But the disadvantage is if you uh, use the membrane, you increase the, the cost and also increase the internal resistance as well. So um, 
to reduce them, the, the usage of a membrane, you could uh, change the, use the membrane solution to make an integrated membrane electrode uh, by using the coding, uh, the casting or decoding way, uh, the coat, uh, uh, coating with ionic exchange polymer, or sometimes even the non-polymers could also uh, solve the problem, like the sulfonated RGO or ionic group grafted and metal oxide. We could also use the polymer mixing to uh, realize it, but uh, reduce the 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 the, char the, tar uh, the, the, the charging uh, rate or ionic uh, transportation rate. And the last one is uh, quite similar to the, the, the previous slide, just to make the surface modification with the ionic group. Okay, uh, let me introduce um, my previous work. Uh, we have done, developed uh, um, a technology that, that enhancing the desalination of CDI with uh, uh, IME by spray coating uh, exchange ion chain polymer to form a very thin layer on top of the AC carbon. And by that way, uh, we reduce the cost and resistance of the uh, electrode and also increase the absorption rate. You can see one um, spray coating a very thin layer of uh, an anion exchange polymer is the fuel, uh, fumium and the cation exchange polymer nation on top of the AC electrode. A, a very thin film um, was formed and activated a very good uh, the capacity for the counter ion, it's specific for counter ion, and, and the no co ion um, stored. So uh, it also activated a very good uh, charge transfer and a very good desalination performance as well. Uh, but in nature, some natural materials and the clay have also shown ion exchange capability because of their multi-layer nanostructure, like LDH, layer double hydroxide. And for example, the hydroxide HT uh, is composed of a positively charged uh, main layer and anions in the interlayer. So the anion can be stored and exchanged. Uh, on the other hand, MT, the Montmorillonite, uh, can store uh, cation in the interlayer. So these two materials maybe could be uh, chosen as um, uh, ion exchange materials. And what's more, they're quite widespread, cheap, and easy to obtain. They also activate very good ion exchange capacity, uh, very high I IEC. So this is uh, uh, the whole uh, diagram of uh, um, the IME CDI with inorganic ion exchange materials. So the, the fabrication is just uh, uh, the first make uh, AC layer, uh, AC electrode, and on the top of it, the spray coating uh, ion exchange materials uh, on it. And finally, to obtain the selectivity for specific uh, ions. Okay, let's come to the result part. So the, both SEM image and the EDX analysis successfully showed the, uh, um, the coding of uh, the, the MT and HE on AC electrode and also XRD patterns is uh, proved is uh, the successful coding. Um, well, we also investigated the binder effect because they, it needs the binder uh, to make the, the, the thin layer. Um, well, uh, we try using different, uh, the ratio of, uh, the ion exchange materials with the PVDF uh, as the binding um, solution. And the come to the result is the higher binder content made the electrosurface surface more densely covered. 
and more smooth, but more hydrophilic, loss of ion transport channels. And um, the, the ion exchange material, its uh, intrinsic capacity is negligible. And well, uh, but when coding on AC, you could see the only counter ion could enter the composite electrode. And the, the capacity of this composite electrode is conversely related to PV, PVDF content. But finally, we got the optimal uh, ratio for cathode is about three to one, and for anode is about five to one. It's about 25% of binder and 17% binder. Uh, okay, oh, we also investigated the per perm selectivity of the, the sole MT or HT coding layer painted, painted on stainless steel mesh as the support substrate. And the result tell us that, that the higher higher PVDF content, the higher of charge transfer resistance, uh, but it could also get a higher uh, perm selected activity. Uh, well, uh, this is a desalination performance of uh, the CDI uh, with the, the composite electrode. Well, um, in short, uh, the the PVDF binder blocks the co-ion, so resulting in high CE. So with the increasing of the PVDF content, you, you could get uh, increasing CE uh, reaching about 84 to 94%. Um, but the PVDF also could uh, decrease the ion transport rate, so you need to compromise these two. Uh, so anyway, um, you could get a maximum specific uh, absorption capacity about 13 to 60 milligram per liter and also the highest uh, uh, specific absorption rate at a certain uh, PVDF concentration. Well, the, the long-term stability shows that uh, this composite work well, but uh, compared to the traditional CDI. And also, we also uh, we, we we tested uh, the uh, stress of organic pollution uh, using the sodium alginate as an example. You can see that the CDI uh, attenuate uh, quite fast the 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 the, the, the specific sulfur capacity when meeting with the uh, organic pollution. Uh, but anyway, the uh, the IME CDI work so so well and only decrease a little bit when there is the presence of uh, the organic pollution at a concentration of 50, 100, and 200 milligrams per liter. And uh, when you stop the uh, organic pollu pollutant, you uh, change to fresh so uh, salt solution, the sac will be recovered a little bit. Um, well, let's come to the uh, conclusion part. So the uh, IME CDI activated very good uh, desalination performance and good uh, stability with much less cost. And because as you can see here, the price is quite low and uh, um, compa in compared with the traditional or uh, MCDI, uh, the cost is much, much lower. And then it also activates better uh, anti-pollution cap capability. So in the future, uh, we could screen more robust than organic ion materials and also uh, enhancing the fabrication approaches to improve the performance and the reliability of the composite export as well. And could also uh, try the application in the ion selective removal and anti falling mechanism uh, study. So finally, I would like to thank uh, the National uh, Science Foundation of China and the uh, NSF of Beijing. Uh, thank you for it. Uh, thank you, Professor Liang. It's a very interesting yeah, your CDI study. 
So any question from panel or from other speakers? So we have not received any question from the chatting box. So, okay, let me start with some question. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it's a very promising technology. So I am a, your inorganic material, yeah, HTMT. Yep. So when you compare, mm -hmm. yeah, just like, uh, you know, the, we have uh, several ion exchange membrane. So some people, they just mm -hmm. use a very simple coating method rather than right. purchasing the ion exchange membrane. So compared to like other uh, poly, polymer ion exchange membrane, because they are very thin, like uh, uh, 100 micrometer of on the top yeah, of right. the uh, carbon electrode. So yeah. what's the your, uh, thickness of the your IME? And then what's the comparing with the other commercial CDI? So how much uh, yeah. it's better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, compared to the uh, mm -hmm. the sand free membrane, the uh, it's the thickness of uh, of a uh, normal membrane is about the one hundred micrometer, right? Uh, but when coating with uh, this inorganic uh, ion exchange material, you could see. You could you see the slide? Yes, I can see that. Yes, yes, you can see that uh, the thickness. It's only about uh, less than five. So the amount of, or the loading amount is very little. It's only about one to two milligram per square centimeter of loading. As long as it's fully covered on top of the AC electrode, it's okay. Um, well, for the performance, we also compare with the uh, the commercialized membrane membrane CDI. You can see yeah. that the, the 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 this one uh, this one this is a CE and the the, the right side the right figure is the set. Mm -hmm. uh, the blue triangle. Oh, is HTMT composite. Mm -hmm. The performance is relatively quite similar to the MCDI uh, in our previous study. Yeah. So it's about uh, 15 milligram per gram, uh, the capacity. And quite All stable. Right. I see. All right. That's very interesting for the, your presentation. Also, yeah, we have one question from Le Lihan. Do we need to consider conductive binder for this uh, electrode fabrication? Uh, yeah, we, I think we consider the BBTF uh, uh, ratios quite seriously because uh, BB, mm -hmm. if there is no BBTF, uh, this binder, it could not form um, a, a stable layer because uh, the uh, the inorganics ion exchange material itself doesn't have any uh, binding capability. So it's a, if you just uh, correlate on top of the AC carbon, it will not be stable. It will be washed out. Uh, so you have to use the binding. The binder itself is not uh, is non conductive. Um, what binder? What we, binder do you? Uh, PVDF. PVDF. All right. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. using PVDF is is uh, is um, is good, but uh, but higher con content of a PVDF would not uh, do good to the performance. So we have to compromise the PVDF content with the ion exchange materials, the composition. All right. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. And then, yeah, we will go okay. for the next speaker. So we have a, a video for the Marta Herrero Gonzalez. Uh, so 
can you thread can you please play a video yes professor yeah i'm just doing that here mm -hmm. so we have a martha here speaker is here uh no not yet okay all right just play video that's fine yeah are you able to view it yeah i can see that please okay go ahead. Hello everyone and thank you all for attending. Is it audible, session. Professor Sean? I am Marta Herrero from the Chemical and Looks okay. Yeah, that's Department fine. Of the University yeah. of Cantabria in Spain. I am going to present the contribution entitled Hydrochloric Acid and Sodium Hydroxide Production by Means of Electrodialysis with Bipolar Membrane from Brain's Trade-off Between Product Concentration, Operation Times and Energy Consumption. From a linear point of view, desalination, in particular seawater reverse osmosis, is able to produce fresh water from two inputs, seawater and energy. Moreover, the chemicals such as acids and bases are required for treatment stages, cleaning and maintenance. However, an hypersaline waste stream called brines is produced. As we already know, these brines are considered harmful for the receiving water bodies. Additionally, brines have been identified as a potential material and in order to contribute towards a more sustainable desalination is proposed. Electrodialysis with bipolar membranes can produce hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide from brines. Thus, a some supply of these chemicals can be achieved avoiding an external purchase. Moreover, a potential reduction of the volume or the impact of the brine discharge could be achieved. This proposal could be considered alone or could be included in zero liquid discharge or minimum liquid discharge systems that could allow the recovery of other chemicals such as salts or metals or even energy. Hello, Sraj. As said in the previous slide, electrodialysis with bipolar membranes is able to produce hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide from two inputs, brains and energy. The main elements of this technology are the cationic and anionic exchange membranes, which allow the selective uh, transport of cations and anions, respectively, and, of course, the bipolar membrane, which dissociates the water molecule into protons and hydroxide ions. Using brine as a feed, which is mainly composed by sodium chloride, and with a correct cell configuration, a concentration of chloride ions and protons in the same compartment generating HCO could be achieved, while in the other compartment, a concentration of sodium and hydroxide ions will generate a sodium hydroxide. The experimental setup used is depicted on this slide. It was operated in semi-batch mode during 40 hours. This means a batch operation mode in which the feed is oversized in order to not achieve a concentration reduction. Whereas acid and base elations were uh, concentrated from, from 0.1 molar of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide respectively. Three different average current densities were evaluated. 500, 750 and 1000 amperes per square meter. Moreover, two energy sources were considered grid mix operated with a power supply, which means a constant current density, and PV solar energy operated with a solar array simulator, which means a variable current density. It was selected a solar irradiation profile of Almeria in the south of Spain in July, with three different panel areas corresponding to the average current densities previously mentioned. Chloride and sodium concentrations in acid and base respectively are depicted on the slide. As seen in the figures, the increase in concentration is initially rapid and then tends to stabilize. Higher concentrations of both acid and base can be achieved with higher average current intensities. Base concentrations are slightly higher than in acid. At same average current intensity, same concentrations are reported, regardless of the power supply then PV solar or PV mix. HCl and NaOH up to 3.3 molar and 3.6 molar are achieved. As far as our knowledge, these concentrations are the highest reported in the literature to date. Most of the works report the concentrations around 2 molar.
Although the concentrations that have been obtained are suitable for subsupply are still part of the commercial standards, those concentration stages, such as distillation for hydrochloric acid and evaporation for sodium hydroxide, could be required. In this presentation, no concentration stages will be considered. However, our research group has some publications regarding this issue, so do not hesitate. A summary of the final concentration for bulk products and specific energy consumption to achieve them is presented on the slide. Increasing the average current density allows achieving higher product concentrations. However, it increases the specific energy consumption. For the same average current densities, operation times remain equivalent. However, specific energy consumption slightly increases for the PV solar energy. In this sense, to obtain a certain product concentration, a trade-off between operation time and average current density should be achieved. Decreasing the operation times requires increasing the average current density, which increases the specific energy consumption. The figure presents the operation times required to achieve the acid concentrations of 1, 2 and 3 molar. Some conclusions can be obtained from the figure. The first one, with the lowest average current density, 500 amperes per square meter, the higher concentrations have not been obtained. Second one, for the same product concentration, less operation time is required at high average current densities. This means that doubling the average current density halves the operation time. And the last one, for some average current densities, operation times remain the equivalent for both power supplies. This new figure presents the specific energy consumption required to achieve a high acid and concentrations of 1, 2 and 3 molar. For same average current densities, the specific energy consumption remains equivalent or slightly higher. The use of PV solar energy could improve the environmental sustainability of the electrolysis with bipolar membranes. On the other hand, for same operation times, higher specific energy consumptions are reported when higher average current densities are employed. This means that doubling the average current density increases from 1 to 1.2 to 1.6 times the specific energy consumption. Finally, the main conclusions obtained are as follows. Achieving higher concentrations require higher average current densities, which increases the specific energy consumption. Reducing the operation times requires higher average current densities, which increases the specific energy consumption. Doubling the average current density halves the operation times, but also multiplies by, one, by between 1.2 to 1.6 the specific energy consumption. Variable current densities, such as solar PV energy, slightly increases the specific energy consumption compared to constant current density, such as the grid mix. However, this difference in value does not justify not using PV solar energy or other renewable energies, even more if we, po uh, if we consider the potential environmental benefits. At last, acknowledge the financial support given by the Ministry of Science and Innovation and the Cantabria government. Do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or, com or comments, and thank you very much for attending to this presentation. Thank you, Masha. So, so next speaker is a recorded video. So Suraj, can you play a video for optimal process design of RED, electricity no sure. production? Sure. Carolina Tristan, yes. Please play the video. Next one. Welcome everyone to my presentation. This is Carolina Tristan, a PhD student at the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering of the University of Cantabria. It's my pleasure to be here today to discuss our work in collaboration with Professor Ignacio Grossman from the Carnegie Mellon University. Um, As you are all aware, reliance on energy intensive water supply sources as desalination or water reuse is set to intensify as fresh water resources decline. The solutions set for water scarcity 
requires a roadmap to carbon neutrality that will involve using more renewable power sources. The question is, what if instead of looking at these technologies as being energy sinks, don't look at as being energy sources? I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about salinity gradient energy capture using reverse electrodialysis, a cutting edge approach to reach a more sustainable water and energy supply portfolio. So let me start off giving you a brief overview of this technology. Salinity gradient energy is the chemical energy release when two water solutions of different salinity is mixed. Our work focuses on reverse electrodialysis dialysis to regenerate electricity out of this renewable source, which is an electrochemical process that uses ion selective membranes to directly draw electric power from salinity differences. RID enables to recover energy from waste stream of energy intensive processes as desalination concentrates or wastewater treat effluents thus cutting down energy and emissions from conventional power sources. But is this approach techno-economic and environmentally sound? To assess RID feasibility, we are developing a modeling tool to provide valuable decision-making support for early stage applied research and to extract design and operation guidelines for full-scale RID implementation in real scenarios as desalination plants. Let me go over our research methods. Going deeper into our modeling tool, we have developed, validate, and update a predictive model of the LED star. The model follows a nested structure describing the LED process from cell per to stack scale. And finally, the LED plan defined by different LED stack arrangements. We assess the performance of the standalone unit and the upscale LED system in the process simulator Aspen Plus, importing the LED stack model developed in Aspen Custom Modern. By setting fit solution properties as inlet concentration and temperature, red LED working conditions and LED stack parameters, namely channel size, number of cell pairs, properties of spacers and membranes, we can then obtain the power output of the LED stack and the whole system and the resultant performance metrics. So using our rigorous model of the LED stack, the next step is to synthesize and optimize the LED process to determine the plant topology and the working conditions, design parameters of each LED stack in the plant that satisfy a given objective, namely maximize the net power output and energy yield while minimizing cost and environmental burdens for a given scenario. Up to now, we applied a simulation-based approach, a simulation-based approach to estimate RID system performance, assuming a simplified arrangement and a fixed design of the RID units through parametric evaluations. But as we start having more complex systems, we might think about an efficient and systematic decision-making decision approach as mathematical programming techniques, which consists in the development of a representation of alternatives from which the optimal solution is selected, the formulation of the mathematical program that generally involves discrete and continuous variables to define the topological structure and operating levels respectively. And finally, solve the optimization model to define the optimal flow sheet design. In our work, we formulate the optimization problem as a generalized disjunctive programming problem in the algebraic modeling model environment by YOMO. And we intend to interface it with the process simulator to retrieve results from our rigorous model. We start off uh, with a semi-rigorous model, which was validated with the simulation results from our rigorous model in Aspen that neglects some non-idealities to find a middle ground between model fidelity and tractability. 
We have defined the superstructure of alternatives uh, based on piecing graph representation, which consists of three main elements. The RID units and the concentrate and dilute source and discharge uh, units, mixers and splitters representing the inlet and outlet in uh, unit ports where flows of materials may take place, and streams which represent flows between the superstructure elements. Here is an example with four RID units with all possible hydraulic configurations. We choose as flow representation to the flow and species composition. So component material balances involve non-convexities due to bilinearities at the mixers that may challenge reaching a global optimum. We consider as a case of a study, the retrofit of a desalination plant with a RID-based energy recovery system. The RID plant retrieves energy from the desalination concentrate, uh, reversibly mixed with different available low salinity sources, as with water treat effluents or seawater, river water. In this case, we assume RID was integrated into a two-pass large capacity seawater reverse osmosis desalination plant. The RID plant energy uh, recovers energy from the first pass reverse osmosis concentrated fluent with the following concentration, volume per cubic meter of the salt water and temperature, which is used as high saline stream in the RID plant. To compare the performance of the fixed series parallel arrangement of the RID units assumed in our previous assessment with the droplet topology the optimization model gives, we restrict our study to one parallel branch, setting the inflow rate, the flow rate and concentration of the inlet streams to each parallel branch equal to the optimal working conditions of the first RID unit in the series for two hydraulic arrangement configurations. The series one from one from our former study, where the outlet stream of the RD unit is fit to the inlet part of the following series unit, and leaving the interconnection between the superstructure units free. All simulation refers to a commercial RD unit from Fumatec with an assumed number of cell pairs representative of industrial scale stacks. So given the set of site, a specific condition, fit stream salinity, total volume, and the stack design of all RID units, the problem address is to determine the red plant topology, number and hydraulic arrangement of the RID units, and fit concentration flow rate and electric current of each RID stack that minimize the levelized cost for energy for the defined problem and the scenario. The levelized cost of energy estimates the average cost per unit of energy generated across the lifetime of a new power plant and is a common metric to benchmark different renewable power technologies. Here are the terms and financial parameters considered in the assessment. And the GDP formulation of the optimization model. The objective is to determine the working conditions, the working conditions, sorry, and the number of RID units in the RID plant that minimize the levelized cost of energy of the RID process, subject to inequality constraints from process specification and equality constraints from material energy balances and thermodynamic relationships. This junction describes uh, describe the selection of the RID unit. And the Boolean variables Y indicates whether a given RID unit exists or not. When the RID unit is selected, its corresponding constraints are enforced, and the negation sets to zero a subset of the continuous variables and cost terms in the objective function. Other other types of logical uh, rela relationships are described using logic propositions. 
Here is summarize uh, the data and assumptions of the case of a study, the resulting model of statics and solver used to solve the GDP optimization model. Now I'd like to move on to the main outcomes of our work. The following table shows the optimal number of RID units and the main performance metrics for each parallel branch in the RID plan for the given scenario. That minimize the valence cost, first row, and maximize the net power output, second row, for each hydraulic configuration. RID-based electricity, electricity could save the salination. The GDP optimization model provides a flow sheet design that reduces the levelized cost and increases the net power output by 90% compared to the series layout. RID-based electricity could save desalination around 50% of the energy and greenhouse gas emissions from the grid mix in the series configuration, up to 17% in the fixed layer. I'd like to recap the main points. We have developed a generalized disjunctive programming model of the RID process synthesis that improves process conceptual design through optimization over conventional trial and error processors, as it less time consuming and considers all feasible realizations. Logic-based models formulate that GDP also aids to envisage optimal flow sheet designs intuitively. Using as a case of a study the retrofit of a large space, large capacity designation plan, if the RID plan topology is left free, we can reduce the levelized cost and increase the net, net, total net power uh, output of the RID process by 90%. Carbon energy demand and emissions from the grid is by 50 to 17%. Overall, these results suggest that our process synthesis model could be a valuable tool to advance technological readiness level of salinity gradient energy recovery using reverse electrodialysis. Uh, so now we are trying different solution strategies to improve computational effort and robustness of the model. We expect to extend the superstructure of alternative with more discrete and continuous decision variables. We intend to move from a single to a multi-objective multi optimization problem involving environmental concerns, consider an, uh, uncertainty on the scenario-based condition and RID stack components, moving from a deterministic to a stochastic optimization model, and concerning the RD stack model, we expect to use our rigorous model instead of the simplified one in Aspen Custom Modeler, depending on the tractability of the optimization model, considering the development of a surrogate model to sort this issue out. We are working on the coding of the interface between the algebraic modeling and simulation environments. So I'd like to conclude by thanking the support of the European Union, Union's LIFE program and the Spanish Ministry of Science and Innovation. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for joining me today. And now I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Suggestions are welcome as well. So Kristen is here. Maybe not. <laughs> also, the, yes, uh, it's the same university and a very interesting talk for the electrodialysis and RED. So thank you for the two speakers. Also, yeah, we now time to close to our session. So thank you, Professor Daiwei Lia. It's very good thank to you. Thank you, share this session. Oh. Yes. And then yes. we have also some of the interesting talk next session. So 10 minutes, we have a lunch time and break 10 minutes, and then mm -hmm. we can join the, yeah, some yeah. of the interesting talk for the next session mm -hmm. after 10 minutes. Thank you. And then see you around in the session. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.